In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to rip the songs from your CD plus G discs to the zipped MP3 plus G format. Zipped MP3 plus G files are supported by virtually all karaoke software players and karaoke hosting applications. The files will be named automatically by utilizing a free DB online karaoke disc database. The software we'll be using is Power CD plus G burner. Many professional karaoke hosts use this program because of the high quality of the ripped song files. Other features of this program such as the ability to copy karaoke discs, create custom compilation karaoke discs, and create CD plus G discs from downloaded MP3 plus G files make it a great value. Follow the link in the description below this video to download Power CD plus G burner. The demo version of Power CD plus G burner has the limitations of allowing only 5 tracks per disc and only the first minute of each track to be ripped. For $39 you can purchase the full unlimited version which is well worth the price if you are going to be working with CD plus G discs and or MP3 plus G files. It is common practice for the karaoke files to be stored on an external USB hard drive. This saves space on the laptop's internal hard drive and makes for easy and fast replacement with a backup drive in an emergency. Modern external hard drives are very small and powered from the USB port which eliminates the need for a separate power supply. Of course you are free to rip the songs to a folder on the laptop's hard drive if you prefer. Assuming that you now have Power CD plus G burner downloaded and installed, we'll continue the tutorial. When you start Power CD plus G burner, go directly to the RIP tab. The basic settings are illustrated here. Your external USB hard drive should already be connected to the laptop. The button used for selecting the folder on the external hard drive would be used to select a folder on the laptop's hard drive if that is where you decide to store the MP3 plus G files. Click on the settings button near the bottom right of the program and you will be presented with this panel. Typical settings are shown here. Once they are set, click OK to return to the main program. Load a CD plus G disk into the CD slash DVD drive and close the tray. If nothing happens after a few seconds click on the refresh button. If you are connected to the internet and no firewall is blocking the program, the song names should appear in the pane. If there is more than one listing for that disk in the database, you will get a pop-up with options to choose from. If you choose the wrong one you can click the refresh button again to bring up the options. A shortcoming of the FreeDB is that the listings are submitted by users, and there is no standard naming convention in place. Some may be in artist slash song title format and others in song title slash artist format. Sometimes the artist will be in last name, first name format and other times vice versa. The free DB system is worth using, but you must configure on a disk by disk basis. There is no way around it, this is a time consuming process. It's also an opportunity to assure that all of your song files are named correctly and in the same naming convention. This is very important to prevent a lot of future headaches when creating song books or importing songs into a hosting application. Take your time and do it right the first time. Now is the time you must make the decision on exactly which naming convention you will go with. Once you decide this, you should always stick with it from this point on. There are numerous configuration options. The first decision will be on how to arrange the artist name. Do you want first name last name as in Kenny Rogers, or do you want last name, first name, as in Rogers, Kenny? You may need to manually rename the artist depending on how the database automatically names them. Next you need to decide which order to place the artist and song title and do you want artist slash song title or song title slash artist? Again you may need to manually name them in that order depending on how the database automatically names them. The next decision will be on whether or not you go with a disk ID and track number. With hosting software installed and a searchable database of all your songs by artist or title, having the disk ID and track number doesn't hold the importance it once did. Songbook software used to rely on a database of disk IDs in order to create custom songbooks. 
Now Songbook Program simply scan the song file names from the hard drive. Still, if you are a karaoke host who has your singers turn in a request form, you may prefer they have a song ID to write down rather than the full song title. Another reason to add the disc ID would be if you have the same song on different disc brands and you want to list them all. As you can see here, I have a disc loaded and the song names are displayed. This is the way the online FreeDB automatically named them. Notice that they are in artist slash song title format. This is what I want except that I prefer the artist to be last name, first name instead of first name last name, like they are now. So now I must manually rename each song that has an artist with the first name and last name. To do this I click on the song name to highlight it and click on the names button and select edit name. Actually, double clicking on the name does the same thing. As you can see here, I now have all the songs named the way I want. Having the output file mask set to curly bracket song curly bracket will produce a song file name. Like, McBride, Martina, where would you be, unless you want to add the disk ID this is good enough. Now let's say, that you do want to add the disk ID and track number, to each song. By clicking on the Edit Disk ID button a panel will appear that contains the disk ID assigned by the FreeDB database which you can see in this example as SD095 if this does not match the ID on the physical disk or you simply want to change it, you can replace this ID with whatever you like. Notice that the output file mask has been changed to curly bracket album curly bracket space dash space curly bracket track number curly bracket space dash space curly bracket song curly bracket. This will produce a song file name, like SD095-01, McBride, Martina, where would you be? Once you have everything set the way you want it you will click on the RIP button. It should take between 15 and 30 seconds per song depending on the reading speed. When finished with the first disk you should browse to the file folder with Windows Explorer to make sure they are named properly. The songs should also all have a zip extension if the songs are not named properly you may need to tweak the output file mask setting. For a large selection of top rated karaoke software visit www.karaoke-software.net.